Looking for tips on how to squeeze out more speed while riding on flat roads? Well, look no further. We are going to break down every aspect of fast flat riding to give you all the tools you need to turn all that good old fashioned into effort into speed. Right, first things first, we cyclists need to understand what we're working against and what we're working with when it comes to fast riding on flat roads. Because there's loads of external forces that come into play, like wind resistance, rolling resistance, friction, and inertia. But it is worth mentioning, we can't totally eliminate all these aspects. But what we can do is minimize the negative consequences. So, what's the biggest thing we can do to get some free speed? Aerodynamic drag is by far the biggest barrier when it comes to finding speed. It makes up around 90% of the resistance that we feel. So how can we minimize that? First off, look in our position. We can bend our arms, make us a little bit longer, lower our heads, even move our hands down to the drops. These subtle changes can make up to 33 watts saving going 30 kilometers per hour. But you have to be able to put the power out through the pedals. There's no point being super aerodynamic, but not being comfortable or not being able to put the power out. So there's that balance. But definitely, aerodynamics is absolutely key. You can also make some changes to your bike, stripping off any unwanted accessories like big bags or lights or panniers or bottles, that kind of thing. You want to keep your bike nice and streamlined. You can also buy some speed. By far the best place to start is your handlebars. You can get some nice aerodynamic ones which sit you in a lower and aerodynamic position. Another upgrade you can make and have a much cooler looking bike is swapping out your wheels. You can go for some deeper rims which will be more aerodynamic. But remember, not all wheels are created equal. Now don't neglect your clothing and helmet. You can get a more aerodynamic lid, but you can also go for some fitting cycling clothing that will cut through the air that bit faster. And to be honest, it will be a lot cheaper than going for some deep section carbon fiber wheels. So we're more aerodynamic and we're going faster for the same effort. But how can we make that effort more effective? With some pacing. Now we can only put a certain amount of power out at any given time, so we need to make the most of it. So what we want to do is to not go too hard too soon. For example, we have a 20 kilometer flat road ride. We want to try and keep the same speed for the first couple of kilometers as the last, create a nice even effort. Now do remember, the first couple of kilometers will feel a lot easier than the last. Now it's inevitable that you might have some rollers or maybe some climbs unless you live in Holland. And to pace that, you need to go a little harder up the climb and over the top. And that is because our old nemesis, wind resistance. Another force we as cyclists need to overcome is rolling resistance. Rolling resistance being the friction between your tires and the road surface. The smoother the road surface, well, the faster you will go. If you're riding on smooth surfaces like the ones we're riding on today, then a harder tire pressure is optimal. But in the real world, well, roads aren't as smooth as this one. So you might want to adapt your tire pressure, go for a bit softer. Harder tire pressure on rough surfaces will send vibrations through your bike and through your body, and it means you've got to put more power out to overcome it. And it actually, you need more power to overcome than if your tire was deforming. So basically, in simple terms, it all depends on what surface you're riding on, depends on what tire pressure you need. So if you're a 75 kilogram rider, for example, and you're riding 25 millimeter tires, then we would suggest you go for around 70 to 100 PSI. 
You can also buy some things to reduce the friction. For example, you can get some new tires. I've got the GP5000s that are among the fastest out there, but you could also go for some latex inner tubes and that will also minimize your friction. So we're more aero and we're more efficient, but now we need to focus on our engine. After all, if we can't put out the power, then we're not gonna go very fast. Now there's loads of different ways to train, but we suggest you look at two areas. One, short, sharp, hard efforts. And the other, building the size of your engine for those sustained efforts for around 15 minutes. Start off with some turbo-tastic training. One to four minutes, full gas, but make sure you're fully recovered before doing it again. And then, building the sustained power. So that's 20 minute efforts of around 80% of your perceived efforts. Now, riding fast on a flat can be really good fun because you can keep it more casual. You can do it in the middle of a ride. Find a nice piece of flat road, wind up the power and put in a good effort. It's actually something that I took granted as a pro. It was all about numbers, intervals. But now I can go hard and fast whenever I want. Next up, specialization. By far the best thing to do if you want to be good at that one thing is to train doing that exact thing. For example, if you want to be good on the climbs, then train on the climbs. And the same works for if you want to go fast on the flat. Climbing will make you good and strong, but you're pedaling in an aerodynamic position. So that's the first difference. The second is how you put the power out through the pedals when you're climbing is different to when the bike is going at speed. And now that's all to do with inertia. I hope you enjoyed this video, but after all, practice makes perfect. So go out and spend some more time on it because then you'll be able to squeeze more speed out of yourself. If there's anything that we have missed, then do let us know in the comment section below. If you enjoyed this video, then give it a big thumbs up. For more how-tos, click on the bike.